the reality of being black in America is realizing that this whole thing was built on the oppression of you, you know, and that is difficult to deal with. And it's something that as a black man and as somebody that loves my people and loves, you know, myself, I realize that there, there is no limit to what you can fight or what you can speak up about. I think it's it, it gives you more fuel when you speak up about one injustice and recognize another and utilize what you did to get something done right there and use it over there. It's like racial discrimination is a problem of right now. Animal rights is a problem of right now. We're like literally causing extinction. What the hell is up, you guys? My name is Jamie Logan, and we're out here in... LA. LA, Los yeah. Angeles, California. And yeah. I am sitting with Dios Mac. Yeah. We met yesterday yes, at this amazing vegan marketplace. Yeah. And he just had such a cool vibe. And I was like, hey, you want to be on my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> and he said yes. So here he is today. Welcome. Yay. Welcome. <laughs> uh, welcome you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're seeing me. Yeah, welcome to Venice. Thank you. Vibing and chilling. So You're vibing welcome. and chilling here in Venice, except you're from New York City. Yeah. Yes, I am. Yes, and I that am. is what initially drew me to you because yeah. a New Yorker is for has forever my my love mm -hmm. and my greatest you know affection because I am a New Yorker myself, yeah. as you guys know. So Dios Mac, why don't you just introduce yourself? I'd love to. Uh, hi, my name is Dios Mac. I am. I like to call myself a vegan uh, entrepreneur, a vegan. Uh, foodie a vegan like I, i'm a vegan influencer in all versions of the word i want to influence your mind to eat vegetables and plants and fruits because you need it and you deserve it and i make music and that's like my claim to fame my vibe and i also model and do countless other things but um dios mac the man the artist and the vegan so dios mac we're gonna get into your vegan journey and yeah. how you came to that realization because most of us did not grow up Right. Eating plants. I definitely do. <laughs> bacon, do. egg, and cheese. I'm from New York. Chopped cheese, bacon, egg, and cheese, all that. That's what. That's where I grew up on. And uh, I had it every day of my life. And now I'm vegan. And I don't even eat bacon. And so. now we're not promoting it. Yeah. So. Look at that. <laughs> so what was that click? And what was that realization in your mind that maybe I shouldn't be eating these products? Um, I, I think my like my journey came in two stages. Like the first stage was like I like I played basketball at a very high level. Like I played in New York. Uh, almost every street ball tournament that everybody knows about. And then, you know, I played a little pro basketball overseas. So like, it was mostly about longevity. I was like, okay, like I want to have the diet that promotes me being more energetic, you know, um, in the black community, you have, we have something called the itis where it's like you eat something and you immediately go to sleep. It's like, okay, I had this great soul food meal and all of a sudden I'm tired and I need three hours to recover. Right. Um, and from that, I was like, okay, there has to be a way that's more functional where it's like, okay, like I eat this and I can go work out. And I realized it was like, okay, like let's include more plants. Let's include more things that are alive rather than, you know, carcasses and, and you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> the mucuses of another animal and the stress of another animal. So uh, slowly it, it was in stages that like I started taking out meats and I started taking out eggs and cheeses. But after a while it just became like all in, it was all spinach, all mushrooms, all you know, potatoes and stuff like that, and realizing how um, those nutrients were way more sustainable for the human body than, again, meat. It, and, and again, I'm not one of those vegans that's like, yeah, all that stuff is now not delicious. It's still delicious. It still goes down great, but it's about what it has, on, like the effect it has on your body. And I feel like that was like the first wave of my like switch over. Um, and then the second wave was like, I, like uh, me and my ex, we had like this long stint of uh, being in Mexico and we were volunteering on farms and all this stuff. And that experience of like being on a farm and at that point I wasn't fully vegan, but I was like, you know, transitioning and just having food that's from like a f direct source. It's like, okay, this chicken that I fed yesterday is giving me eggs tomorrow, you know, and I eat those eggs and it, and it, it's creamy. You whip it up. It's not watery like the, the eggs in America, you know? Um, but that, like I noticed that and then came back to America and I was like, all right, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be down to like just subscribe to this industrial version of like food production and um, and the stress that you can literally like it's no guess. Like once you look and see one farm egg to a 
like industrial egg, you see that there's a difference between the animals and that's not fair for us at the end of it where it's like, okay, now you're taking in those nutrients of a stressed animal and wonder why you're stressed, wonder why we're suffering from anxiety, you know? Like, I think it's really about doing whatever you can to like, make your body operate at its highest you know like we do these you know updates on our phones and our operating system works all good or whatever or you know sometimes they slow down we're not gonna talk about that mm. <laughs> <laughs> they slow down for a reason because they right. want you to buy right more. buy the next one but we don't get a next one we don't get a next phone we, we this is our only like phone in this like experience so like I, I kept looking for ways to upgrade my operating system and make sure that it's working at its highest functionality and um after all the research like vegan was what i found and i and I'm, i have not been like uh I haven't been regretted it since I've done it. So That's amazing. Grateful. And I think, you know, it comes to a point where when we recognize we do not need these products for survival anymore. Right. We are not living in the 1800s where you had a, you know, small yard with chickens that were laying eggs or whatnot. We realize that we have to evolve right. with the changing times. And that's exactly what we have done. Yeah. Now, I think, you know, when you talk about this gradual transition, I think for a lot of people taking it in steps and being like, okay, I could go a week without meat. Okay, I could go two weeks without meat. Oh, you know what? Let me try switching that milk to almond milk or oat milk. And then you realize, oh, it's actually a lot easier yeah. than, than you thought it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so why don't you talk a little bit about just physically some of the changes that you noticed? So you're saying that you, you did feel a lot better, yeah, yeah. but like, did you slim down? Did you have more mental clarity, more energy? I would say, I mean, it's all of the above. Like, I, I honestly, like you, it literally is as literal as it is you know like if you if you think about it, it's like if i'm putting in spinach and mushrooms instead of eggs and cheese in the morning those are two completely different things like the substances are going to do two di different things when they get in your body and i believe um that the first thing i saw was the mental clarity and then like honestly the skin was just ridiculous like i always like i, I can attest to being great looking for uh, the entire experience <laughs> but uh that was one thing that i really felt was like immediate it was like okay now i'm just not getting pimples or at least when i do i know exactly what i ate or i, I can pinpoint it. it's like okay two days ago i had something that had another substance in it that i didn't really recognize and that was like one of my favorite things and what i always recommend but the slim down was something that like at first, especially as a basketball player, like you're scared to like, okay, I lose the mass and all of a sudden like I get bumped on the course over, I'm gonna slide across the floor, you know? <laughs> but, but it's like, it was more so that like, I feel like I just got cut. Like it was like, it was this leanness that was like immortal. It was like an immortal lean. Like, you know that like I did three days straight of ab workouts and I feel like, I feel like shirtless Mac, you know? Yeah. I, I felt like shirtless Mac all the time after that, you know, like there was no bloat. And that's the thing, like the bloating, like I feel like uh, because there's so many uh, like fats and these complex fats that we have to break down and it takes so long, it's sitting in our body and waiting for that. So we get like, I still look good, but I was chunkier when I was eating meat. And as soon as I started switching over, it was as if like the same cut, the same look, but just like like cut it all down like this is just take the body fat off and let's like just look really really right so well later in this that. episode we're going to get into exactly what you're eating mm -hmm. because i think that there's a misconception that when you go vegan you're automatically going to lose all this weight or get into shape and i think it's obviously very possible and it's easier to do so right, right. if you're eating a whole foods plant-based diet but you can also go vegan and eat you vegan cheeses all day long and Oreos and potato chips and maybe not feel as great. And I think that's where people go wrong is they're not eating correctly. And then they're like, mm. oh, I feel like shit. And then they blame it on the vegan diet or the plant-based diet. Right. And right. I think also there's this misconception between plant-based and veganism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So veganism, as we know, it's a moral and ethical standpoint against the oppression of animals. Mm -hmm. And plant-based is simply a diet. So yeah. you can, you know, eat, you can eat anything on, on anything vegan on a ve when you're vegan, you're obviously eating plant-based when you're vegan, but you are not wearing leather. You are not using cosmetics that are tested on animals. You're not going to rodeos and entertainment shows that use animals. So it is this like moral and ethical thing. Yeah. So when you started seeing this as more of like a social justice oriented thing, can you talk a little bit about what that was like and maybe some of the challenges you faced from your community or from your mm. friends and family? I feel like, uh, again, going back to that, like the farm experience, right? 
the one part that stuck out to me the most because again like i feel like as a as a a plant-based person first and then because i think that's like my journey like plant-based was first because like my journey was internal first it never was about an animal no matter how many chickens i love and like i love animals but the reality was it was something that i wanted to do for myself in my life and then the veganism came in again a second wave where i was on the farm one time and um I'm like I'm tending to the like uh, sounding like a farmer. I'm still from New York. Don't don't get it twisted. Um, but like I'm tending to the the yard and stuff like that. But there was this one moment where like I was ordered to not ordered, but like told to like cut down trees. Right. So I'm cutting them down. And basically there was a road on the other side of the farm where like after I cut them down, I like saw the road. And every morning there was a truckload of chickens coming one direction. They never went back this way. That that was what like messed my mind up because. It wasn't like, okay, truckload of chickens, they're in cages that, like, you know, give them enough space to walk around. I'm talking about, like, a truckload of chickens, but they're packed to the brim to the point where none of them are moving. They're, they just look like a white blob in every cage, and then the, it's all the way stacked up. So that was the hard thing for me to, like, conceptualize because, like, you know, you, you as a conscious eater, you start to watch these documentaries just to inform yourself. It's like, okay, what is the negative effects of, you know, industrialization and, like, oh, we have all these cows and methane is messing up our ozone or we only use our like our lands to like um, produce crops that can be fed to our industrial animals, you know, like all of those negative effects. It's all like good to hear. But when you're in New York, you're kind of far from it. It doesn't it's not right in your face when it was in my face. And I'm looking at like these chickens again, go one way, but never come back this way. It's like the truck leaves empty. But then the next morning comes back with more chickens. I'm like, where are you guys getting these like this many chickens? And how are you doing that every day to just pack them all in that, you know, that space? So I think my my activism in my own form has always been information. Like I, I've always been a student and I love learning and I always I always love like I, I have a hard time saying teaching. I just love to give the information I've received. Like if I can like relay it and give a message to somebody else and hopefully they it, you don't have to go vegan. You don't have to be like a plant based eater. You can just eat consciously. And I feel like I've like imparted something at least that I've gotten because that's all that really matters. Like it is about like like a lot of Americans eat in an emotional space where it's like, okay, I'm sad. So I'm, I'm eating and I'm just trying to digest something that make me feel outside of the feeling I have. But like, it's a beautiful thing when you start to realize like, Oh, I can actually like sit here and engage with my food fully and be present and understand everything that is going into my body when it does, instead of, you know, taking these mental breaks and these, (laughs) you know, these mental, like we always tend to do it a lot. And I think that's like the best part about, leading this life is you know being kind of a north star to people that you know don't even know they need one sometimes i just like i i say i'm vegan and all of a sudden they look at me in this way and it's like oh my god okay so like what do you do with food how do you approach things and how do you eat it's like dang like i didn't know i could have had like a bowl of beans and had more protein than me you know like these things are things that you know aren't really um given to the society in a a easy to digest form especially with fast food and stuff like they're not taught to us because listen sick people are money and these (laughs) industries (laughs) want to keep people sick and want to make more money and you know you bring up this point of eating consciously eating mindfully right i and you're talking about a place in mexico where you're working on a farm and these are you know the rural the suburbs of of of, i guess where you're describing where the chickens are coming from Mm -hmm. and even that is uncomfortable to think about so you know only uh, imagine just in our area in new york city them trucking these chickens in from pennsylvania and killing them i don't think that there's a way to eat mindfully and eat animals because it comes to a point where you just stop seeing them as food mm. and you start mm. seeing them mm. as individuals with souls, with the desire to live, with the mm. capacity to think, feel and suffer. And if you're spiritual and if you're mindful, mm. how can you be okay with them having their heads cut off yeah, and being yeah. killed for an unnecessary purpose? Mm. We're not eating them for survival anymore. Mm. We're simply eating them for taste pleasure alone. Gluttony, truth be told, because it's it, it's 
it's at this point where like like when I studied um, in school, like it was always about like these empires, right? We always talk about Rome and we talk about the things that fall, but like it's always that point where the empire gets to this incredible industrial point where they're starting to overeat. When, whenever there's overeating or overweight problems, that means we're doing something like wrong, you know? And a lot of the times it can be pointed to like, the the things that we do to produce our food and we're producing food at such a mass rate that most of the things are getting thrown away or like stabbed with like preservatives to make sure they stay fresh it's like these it's obviously something wrong like okay like you killed this chicken right cool like you, you did your thing right but now you're gonna waste the meat that's that's absurd like i think that's the part that's like continuing continuously like uh like getting to me when i see people throwing away the the stuff that like again you killed the being for or like wasting the food like uh because i worked in the catering industry mm -hmm. for a little bit that is outlandish like the amount of waste that is at the end of an, eva an event and there's people hungry outside you know mm -hmm. like it, it, how it about, again we have to figure it out and how about all the food that the animals are eating so we're raising right, right. give or take 50 or there, they say about 80 billion animals, and that doesn't even include the, the marine life that people are raising to kill mm -hmm. for food. And then we think about all of the starving people in the world. Right. If we just took a percentage of the land that we use to grow crops yeah. to feed animals, yeah. if we took a percentage of that arable land, I'm not saying all of it is arable, mm -hmm. and used it to grow crops for human consumption, mm -hmm. we could feed the entire world yeah. Yeah. at least three times over. Yeah. How infuriating is that? Yeah, it's, it's, we're operating as if like we're we're like kids operating a like a like a ship, like something that's way too complex. But it's like we, yo, we built this, like we built the society, so it's always readily changed if we want it to be. But we don't go that route. We always go with status quo because people are empowered. There's things that are in, as you said, we're we're benefiting off of sick. So mm -hmm. like if we have all the money there and the people that are in charge are getting paid by the that like that industry then it literally is something that is going to continue to build more problems than solutions and as you said like that's just one of the problems where a percentage of how we're using it currently could solve all the problems. Mm -hmm. Like the same with homelessness, a percentage of the unused land could be used to house most of the people that are mm -hmm. like homeless, you know, so um it, it's it's just a, it's a societal thing and I think it is really about greed and about like people just wanting to stay where they are rather than um, working to really benefit all like it really could be everybody in this you know place not really worrying about these minuscule things because again like the human still worrying about suffering when we built the society means we're like we're utilizing our consciousness in a way that's like less than what we really could be. The problem too is that you have everyday people that are contributing to this issue three times a day with oh, their yeah, food right, choices. Right. So three times a day, these people aren't causing others to be homeless or being sexist, being anti LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. Like they're not doing that three times a day yeah. for the most part, three times a day, they are paying for this abuse. Right, right, right. And so that is really, a hard pill to swallow because it's like you have friends and family people that you love mm -hmm. that are contributing to a cause that you care deeply about mm -hmm. and that for me was the hardest part about going vegan it mm -hmm. wasn't the food choices yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. giving up certain products it was literally dealing with the people that i love yeah. and not understanding why they don't care like i do mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. why don't you talk a little bit about your during your transition i know you mm -hmm. were saying you lead by example and people ask questions but was there ever a time where you kind of went at it with somebody over uh, there? Like, the, like a moment of friction. I feel yeah. like, uh, I feel like in all honesty, because I'm such an easygoing person, friction's hard to find with me. Like I'm like I'm. Like, there's this saying, "Don't get the Buddha mad." Like I'm literally the Buddha. Like it's hard as hell to get me mad. But I will say, when it first started, like when I first started my journey, it was hard for my family to really accept it because of the fact that like we, we're a black ass family. We really do eat black food like we and we enjoy it like we really enjoy it as a group as a community and it's a beautiful like experience but like that first transition those first thanksgivings where i'm like okay like i really can't eat any of this stuff and i have to explain why and they're they're asking these same questions where it's like is it about the animals is it, is it about you like what is it like and asking these questions that challenge my new position and I mean, at the end of the day, there was no friction just because of the fact that they were so accepting of me. But that transition was difficult. But it's it's beautiful because now on the other side, it's it's more so of like, um, 
a, a, a middle ground where they're not necessarily all the way vegan, although like my brother actually is like my brother went completely and it's actually beautiful. But like the rest of my family, you know, take their time and do whatever they can uh in their diet and in their capacity, you know, because I like, again, I think especially from, you know, my upbringing and what I've noticed, a lot of the people in my family do not go all the way in with it because of the fact that like they're still in the space of stress and like and, and trying to figure out what it is to live in this life and live in this community and, and and this world without stressing. And sometimes like as this next generation, as this younger generation that goes vegan and has this ease of it, we do have to recognize how our parents built us a life for us that makes it possible for us to make these decisions like go to New York and go, I mean, go to L.A. when you're from New York and just live there for a bit like that's off the back of our parents work. So sometimes I see that as another reason why veganism is easier for this generation veganism plant-based diet I, I feel like it's easier for this generation because not only is there more accessible information because of the internet but it's also like our parents made it possible for us to have more free choices than even they did so they're they're taking their time but like if you think about it, how many 60 year old 50 year old 40 year old vegans or plant-based people do you see at the end of the day, those people were going through a, a completely different time, a completely different era. So um, I offer understanding. And, so, and again, like when I do receive friction, I just I approach it in this way where like, again, I'm, I'm, I will never force my understanding on somebody, but I will offer it so they have their own, you know, uh, realization and, and whatever they can take from it. But yeah, I think we have to recognize that we can't for stand there and force feed people. Right, guys. Right. But it's also one of those things where people are forcing their beliefs on animals and they're forcing right, animals right. to live a certain life, die a certain way. Mm. And so mm. it's like at the end of the day, it's like, are we really forcing anything on somebody or are we just trying to enlighten and trying to make yeah. the world a more peaceful, better place? Because if you look at veganism in terms of a social justice movement, I wouldn't say, you know, some of the time it's okay to be racist. Right. Some of the time right, 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 it's right, right. okay to hate women. Mm. Some of the time it's okay to kick animals. Some of the time, it, like you don't, it, it's either you're you're all in and mm. you say it's never okay to do these things, or you're not. Mm -hmm. And so I think with like the vegan issue, at least for me, the more I've gotten involved in activism, the more I've gone to slaughterhouses and yeah, done yeah. undercover investigations and really seen. The, the the worst cruelty in the world towards mm. the most innocent vulnerable beings the, the less patience i have for people to just take their time and right, people right. to you know make excuses as to why they can't change like listen my parents are probably from around the same time frame yeah, your parents course, were course. born probably my mom's from the south my dad's from jersey they obviously we have different cultural backgrounds mm. but we both ate meat mm. or my family all ate meat um but if we want to extend their life times, if yeah, we want to like add yeah. years to their lives, but also help them not contribute to a suffering issue, I've found at least that I have to use my voice and speak up. And mm. that does create friction. And I find that for a lot of vegans and a lot of just activists in general, it is, it's devastating. Right, right. And it, it can cause complete divides. Like yeah. there's actually family members that I don't even talk to anymore. Wow. Over this, yeah. They yeah, yeah. totally defriended me off of social media. Hmm. Um, probably like make fun of me. I, my one of my cousins um, on my mom's side posted this like free range organic meat thing on her <laughs> Facebook, yeah. and I commented and I was like, OMG, this reminds me of Elmwood dog meat. El, you know Elwood Dog Meat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the marketing company that they like pretend to like kill and raise dogs on like a family farm. And it just shows people the cognitive dissonance and the disconnection. Like if you would not do these things to a dog or cat, you should not be doing them to a cow, chicken, pig, or turkey or fish. It's just, it, so that is kind of like the disconnect. But I admire you for setting the way and leading by example because at the end of the day, we can't force them to do yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As much as I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, like I, the thing is, I respect because one thing about uh, me as a man, I've always had this tendency. I guess it's also because I was raised by an extremely strong black woman. So like I watch like even as I hear you speak, I I admire that. Like I admire the fire because like I like because it's not natural to me and because I was raised by my father to be such a peaceful person mm -hmm. like to to hone my energy because sometimes like as i've noticed when i get upset and as i said the don't get the buddha mad 
I don't like getting upset because I really do not have control over it. I like I say things that I don't really mean. I get I, I hurt people and I don't want to. So sometimes I take too far of a rein on that. And then I'm not fighting for things that I actually do believe, which, again, like sometimes it is like I have to hear it from a woman, someone that's fired up about it and really mean it to be like, oh, shit, like, no, that that actually does make sense, because these are things that I do believe. And again, yeah. all I needed was that moment where I watched that truck go by and I and. It's it's been years, but I still remember it so vividly because it sucked. It was like I'm watching, and again, I don't. I've I've never been the type to see animals outside of us, but like we do have to start thinking about the fact that in the last ten years, in the last fifteen years, yo, how many animals went extinct, bro? Like like how many how many things are we going to like? change on this planet that do not really benefit us like we do need a diversification in our animal kingdom but we're not really respecting that animal kingdom because we're only trying to feed ourselves and we're overfeeding at this point so now we're extincting like we're causing extinction for no reason like just for the excess not for you know like for the actual okay we're actually hungry let's make sure we eat you know like mm -hmm. it's it's beyond that now so well, um, like yeah. Greta Thunberg once said act like your house is on fire. And so, you know, I think it's important to maintain a peaceful, calm demeanor, and it's important to meditate and really like look inward. And I don't go around screaming and yelling at people all the time, <laughs> but it's important to like have that as a foundation. And then based on like what situation you're in and who you're right, talking right, to, right. to speak up about these issues, because the reason that I got into activism was because I realized that nothing was changing. Mm -hmm. And if I want to start moving the needle and make this world a better place before I leave it, I got to start doing something yeah, now. Yeah. So I started the podcast and the street style interviews and this, this and that. And these are uncomfortable topics. Right, of course. People yeah. don't want to hear it. Yeah. So I think that we each have our own way of reaching people. The, the folks that are going to follow you and you're going to reach are going to be different from the people that I'm going to reach. Right, you know, right. somebody's going to look at you and be like, oh, I can relate to him. Exactly, exactly. And I want to be like him yeah. and change because of that. Yeah. Um, so what uh, are, what's like an everyday food situation for you like? Walk us through breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Huh. Uh one thing I'd really love to uh, relate or uh, relay, excuse me, relay to you is when you start eating plant based, you'll realize that three meals is absolutely ridiculous. Mm. I cannot tell you how many days I've eaten two meals or one meal because what I ate was so complex that my body needed more time to actually digest it, you know, like. It, and, and it had so much nutrients that, again, the entire day I'm filled with energy, almost overloaded with energy. So um, it depends on what I and that's what I also love. I feel like I prescribe my food to myself. So it depends on what day I'm about to have. Like if I have a day where it's high energy and I have to move a lot, then I'm going complex carbs in the top of the day, like overnight oats, which I, I will give a shout out to my ex which most people don't do. So, <laughs> you feel me? Uh, shout out Shorty, because she really put me on the overnight oats. And she was making like making them for me every day. Like, these, like the, the mason jars filled with all the... I used to... Like, I love raisins. So, she would have mad raisins in there. And, like, that, the raisins have nothing to do with the actual point. But <laughs> so, yeah, I just love raisins. But, like, that complex carb of, like, having a soaked oat and just eating that. And, like, I swear to you, it will sit in your stomach for six hours, mm -hmm. seven hours, and fill you with energy. And I think that's the reality of, like, switching over is how, con like, how conscious you can start eating, you know. Um, but, uh, like, a day, it really does depend on the vibe. And, like, uh, again, out here, because I'm really deeply involved in veganism out here and, like, and, and supporting every vegan restaurant I can, um, it depends on what area my activities have to go. So, like, if I'm in downtown L.A., there's a spot called Vegan Hooligans. If They have this uh, tater tot burrito that's absurd. It's so good. It's, like, ridiculously good. There's... um. There's one of my brothers in uh, in downtown next to like a uh, place that I work is uh, Solistic, which is he's a um, a black Cuban like chef and he makes outrageous food like like his burger is amazing. He, and, he, and the beautiful thing is he's making something new almost every day. Like one day I pulled up and I go often. So one day I pulled up and he just had a cilantro sauce freshly made like and he, he juiced it himself. So it was like these things that like that extra mile is what i really admired because it's like okay like this is completely fresh food that i can really attach to um 
but yeah during the day it, just, it, it truly does depend on what the vibe is and what i'd actually like to enjoy. hey jane hey i wasn't sure if you were rolling we are but yeah. i locked myself out so we're <laughs> <laughs> No, okay, it's fine. I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't uh, laugh. <laughs> it's fine. I brought everything out here no. beforehand, but so oh. dumb. Oh, it's okay. It's nicer outside. It is nice. So I'll just text you when I... Okay, thank you. The most realistic reaction ever. <laughs> She's like, of course you did. No surprise here. Um, okay, so and I think okay, so this is great. So you'll do some type of burrito, and I think you know it's so fun because you can get so excited about different yeah. plant-based foods and realize that there's like no limit to what you can eat. Like nice. I've had everything from vegan oxtail to vegan scallops yeah, and shrimp yeah. and um, amazing like different vegetable dishes. I would say 80% of the time I try to keep it whole foods plant-based. Right, 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 right. So a lot of oats, a lot of rice, beans, vegetables, fruits. I think fruits are amazing. And you bring up a really good point about the three times a day thing. Sometimes it's okay to give your body a break from eating. Right. Like you don't have to eat three huge meals every single day. If you're listening to your body and you're like, oh, okay, maybe I'm not so hungry right now. Maybe lunch is not something you need that day. That part. And then <laughs> Listen to your body is, yeah. oh my gosh. There yes. might be other other days where you're hungrier and other yeah. days where you're not. Facts, facts. So listening to that, I mean, I will say like after knowing V and like I've become such a foodie and like I get so excited about recipes and sauces mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. I want to bring up like more of a serious topic, which is just social justice in general yeah. and oppression. And I think you find some people that will compare different social justice issues and say, well, why would I go vegan when my people are in trouble mm, yeah, and I need course. to fight for my people? And especially coming from the black community mm. where it, it, of course this is a social justice mm, issue and of course we should be speaking up about racism and these problems. Um, but don't you think it's possible to speak up about both and then mm. use whatever oppression we face to then make sure it doesn't happen to others? Mm. Like, What is your stance on that? I, I absolutely love that question. I feel that at the end of the day, the reality of being black in America is realizing that this like this whole thing was built on the oppression of you, you know, and that that's hard to realize. I literally the conversation I met you, me and the homie was talking just about that, like about a black kid in a history class. Like that is one of the most exhausting thing for a black person to sit through is history because you're not teaching me my history. You're teaching me what I got, what I went through to get to right here. But that's it. You taught me the last 400 years. Really, that's it. And that is difficult to deal with. And it's something that, again, it's been 400 years. It was 400 years, but we're only 100 years out. Like, we're not we're not far out. It's not even like the balance is not there, you know. So it's fresh. It's something that's harmful. But I think as a black man and as somebody that, like, loves my people and loves, you know, myself, I realize that there, like, there's no limit to what you can fight or what you can like speak up about. I think it's it, it gives you more fuel when you speak about uh, speak up about one like injustice and recognize another and mm -hmm. utilize what you did to get something done right there and use it over there. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, like, just like, it's like, uh, racial discrimination is a problem of right now animal rights is a problem of right now we're like literally causing extinction so there, there's no like and, and again like veganism and, and plant-based lifestyle is not just about oh my god i look great and blah 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 like it goes further because again the way that we're producing beef and chickens and, and and eggs and all of this is literally causing problems for the environment so it's bigger than just the sexiness of oh i'm vegan or oh i was vegan for two years but i just couldn't do like <laughs> yo, yo like it's not just that it's about the fact that we have to change as a consciousness to save where we live like not new york not la not the planet like the entire planet like we and at the end of the day i'm one of those people that really subscribe to the idea that like yes i i get that there was hatred and there was things done wrong to my people but at the end of the day we're one race so it's not like we're we're fighting for the dumbest things like like if i, I feel like everybody needs to watch rick and morty because it's damn near a documentary like you really have to understand that we're fighting over the most minuscule differences that cause us to not pay attention to the bigger picture the macro is the reality that the ozone layer is opening up because of what we're doing to it like 
we and we're fighting over who looks like her and who looks like me like get get the fuck out of here. like mm. pay attention you feel me like it's not about the the things that make us different because we're 99 percent the same same mm. bones same organs same all so there's the skin color shit doesn't make sense the cultural shit doesn't make sense religious differences don't make sense it's about solving what we need to do to live in harmony with where we actually live because that we're natural beings all of us are made up of earth mm. We're made up of where we live. So to not be connected because we're so deeply ingrained into hatred towards one another for minor differences is literally absurd. Like, I, so in my opinion, I feel like fighting for the community to be better and to be better to one another and being better to our planet and the things around us is hand in hand. Like mm -hmm. you respect another man. I feel like in, in all honesty, if I like used foresight, I would literally uh, like suspect that when things go right and when our consciousness as a whole goes in the right direction, those things will solve each other, like solve themselves mm. at the same time. Like we'll literally elevate to a point where we see, oh, when I realize that that man is no different from that man because of his skin color, it's also going to be like that animal is no different from this human like it'll be the same thing or this tree is no different like the fact that people don't see trees as living beings is absurd to me like they, like we are all one because we're literally there no energy and no matter has gone anywhere it just recycles it's just one recycled like system so earth is literally you are made up of everything that's already been here and when you leave you're giving it back so everything you see is you you know it's like it's a reflection you know so um that's what i really feel is like it, it, it will be the 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 rise of a, and that again like I always attribute a lot of this like conscious uprising and people learning to be more in tune with life itself with the internet because knowledge is going like this yeah. you feel me like you learn about some shit that had Kai Sanat had that had that shit <laughs> had, the this shit went crazy but I learned about it I'm not there the you feel me I'm not there I'm nowhere near but how do I know about that I saw it you feel me that doesn't bring up our consciousness as a society you feel me like that that's what <laughs> like in itself it's so funny because like that's the thing like the the reality of it and i'm, I'm always in, very strong with my words so i'm like I, I don't ever like to manifest anything but the reality of it is technology can be literally the thing that saves us and moves us closer to each other or literally takes us further into darkness and we do dumber shit you know so I, again it's really up to us to like make the decisions and again like as I said, like my journey was personal first, then it became like bigger. And I think that is how everybody's journey is going to be. You know, it has to be like inward first. It's like, just take those daily moments where it's like, do I need this cheeseburger from McDonald's or can I walk three minutes down the block and get a fruit salad or say, so you feel me? Like just take those little moments and take it step by step and moment by moment to do better for you. So you can then in turn see the outside of you as something that needs more done, you know? Um, yeah. Totally. Let's say that. I mean, that you said so many yeah, beautiful sorry, things, <laughs> in that, and there's so many little things that I'm gonna try and respond to. Yeah. I mean, first of all, if you do find yourself at a McDonald's, they actually have vegan apple pie. Their oh. apple pie is vegan, so oh. it's like just go for that instead if you have nowhere else to go. But speaking of bad. which, we're also looking at how these industries are oppressing people. So mm. we've first started off in your response with talking about how. Um, these animal agriculture, uh, how it's in, how it's a problem and how mm. it's a social justice issue, but that we can fight for both issues, right? Right, right? And also, I think that a lot of people don't realize how interconnected the two issues are because mm. animal agriculture is affecting people of color and minorities mm. because of number one, who's working inside of these slaughterhouses, mm. Mm. number two, where they place them, yeah, yeah. where are the factory farms, right, also, right. where are a lot of the fast food joints? Right, it's not on right, Park right. Avenue, right, right, right. it's in you know, rural it's communities and in, in low income <laughs> it's neighborhoods. It's a fact. Yeah, low income neighborhoods. And not only that, but these very people that are forced to eat these products mm. and only have access to these products then suffer health consequences sooner. Directly and and related, yeah, yeah, directly related to that. So we want to talk about like the connection between that. It's like Hello, you know, this is environmental racism. If you ask me, it's systematic, it, it's oppression. So that there's that for one. And then speaking of, you know, from the moment we are born, the first form of oppression that we are taught is that this animal is food 
and this mm. animal is our companion. Mm. And that right there is one of the first isms that we are taught, speciesism. Mm. It's the idea and belief that this life is worth more than this wow. life based on just what they look like, yeah, simply yeah. that. Not intelligence, not you know um, personality, because the farm animals that we're eating are actually very intelligent yeah, and they have their own personalities. So that right there is the first form of oppression that we are taught. And if we could just actually learn to love and respect both animals and realize that they both have the right to be here, both desire to live, right. that we should be treating them with respect, we can surely look at our fellow humans and treat them with that yeah. same respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, it's that's beautifully put. Like, I, I, I feel, again, like I feel like that's exactly um, like how I've always like again, it's it's something that you see is a, um, a discrepancy in you know our upbringing well, among other things. But again, like I, I do feel like it is that one thing where you see the the parallels and how things like literally are hand in hand. And I believe the whatever that part of the consciousness that like has us a little off once that thing is turned and it's like okay once we see animals as one with us we will start seeing all of us as one because that that's the one thing that i believe is uh absent from our consciousness is the oneness you know and and oneness also starts from within and i don't think a lot of people do the inner work mm -mm. you know like again people are so obsessed with uh, the bill, the, 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 the rent, the, this, the, that, mm -hmm. that they're not focused on the them, <laughs> you know, like just, just a moment to just sit still. It's like, what am I feeling today? How do I feel about it today? Like that inner care is then immediately outward. Like it immediately, like then you start to look around. It's like, Oh, I felt like this. And I can see that that person feels similar to what I felt. This is what I needed. This is what I give, mm -hmm. you know, like that, that consciousness is, again it's a step away and that's why i'm so in love with the now like i love the present because i see so much potential for the present to go right because there's so much more consciousness there's so much more people meditating there's so many more people like taking conscious routes of living and that is the key where you know you do the inner work so the outer work is easier and we all starting to interact with each other as like equal like you are me and i am you like that kind of energy will then in turn spread everywhere and it'll be easier for us to just interact and be one with our planet because again we are one with our planet none of us exist on mars we exist right here so. well you do have that energy like you do put that out that's why from the mo i was sitting in a cafe across the cafe from him mm -hmm. and for some reason we just started talking it's like mm -hmm. you usually you just have that energy and when you talk about this collective conscious you know there's these studies that show that when a group of people get together and meditate Facts. and put love Facts. out into the Facts. universe and they do it for a period of time, during that period of time, there's less crimes that mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. Isn't that wild? Yeah, yeah, we're one. Like, we're literally one in art. We share one, like, consciousness for real. And, like, I love to touch on this because this is really, like, the essence of who I am and how I found myself. But, like, when it comes to music, I shit you not. I can't tell you how many people have like, okay, I'm vibing, I'm vibing, I'm in the, you, you're literally, Pharrell says it in interviews as well, like, when you're getting the music, you're getting it. Like, it's in a cloud. Like, the cloud that we have on our phones is the same conscious cloud that we have above us. And when you're in a vibe and you're vibing, you're enjoying yourself and you're just one with the present moment, you're able to grab a song from the consciousness. But if you don't let it out, it will go back up and someone else will be able to grab it, you know? So that that's how it shows you, like, we are sharing a consciousness. So once we, again, three or four people have a beautiful moment right in Venice and they just have a conscious conversation that brings up their bright vibration, that is then deposited into the, the atmosphere, into our consciousness as a whole, mm. and we get to all share it. So that's the thing, like, that's why I really do believe the inner work is the thing that's gonna, like, you do the inner work, you're doing your daily deposit, just for your side of it, doing your part, and then, again, you spread to more people, you have a group meditation, you have a group, a group think about something like veganism and something about animal rights and something about human rights. All of a sudden, it, it's contagious. It, like pe people always follow the vibe. Like I, I was at, a, I was at, a, I was at a, um, a, a Juneteenth celebration, and one random moment, everybody started running, and I shit you not, 
people didn't know what they were running from, but they all started running if they didn't know. It doesn't matter if you don't know. It's like, bro, I, I see you run, I'm going to go. Like, it's because of the fact that we are literal animals as well. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that we have to, like, ingrain in ourselves. Yes, we gave our species the name human, but we're all animal. We're all anima, which is purely just life. So if we're all one, we're good. Like, you see a stampede of animals, you're going to do the same shit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's human or not. So that's why I feel like uh, that collective consciousness idea is something that's so, so important for us to understand is that we're, we're literally sharing it. So having these thoughts and having these conversations that literally intentionally raise vibration and intentionally like it, again if it's not for everybody around you purely just to raise your own vibration mm -hmm. having that still moment and just thinking about positive things i am good i am happy i am life i am love i am presence i'm all the, and and sharing that and giving that to somebody and i, I think that's again it's an evolution i feel like we're, we're going the right direction but we have to stay the course and also pay attention to it we, we, like what is the right course of action what is the right way to treat somebody mm. and um uh, yeah. <laughs> I think the reason that we're able to do what we do to animals is because we we say that they are less than right. them and we say that right. they are different. And so when you say we are all one, what does that mean? Because I think some people have the they have a hard time comparing humans to animals. Mm, and they yeah. say, well, they're not as smart as us or right, they right, can't right. do this, they can't do that. So how would you respond to that? Oh. Uh. Animals are uh, extremely complex in the way that they have hierarchy in their own societies. They have social structure. They have uh, some are, are polygamous, some are mo monogamous for their entire life. Like some of them, like uh, the sea bass, will travel miles and miles and miles to find just their counterpart. Like their their functioning in daily life is as complex as ours but we have built something around our own consciousness and ego to make us think that we are more important than everything else it it, it purely is just our own <laughs> our own mistake that we think we're different from anything else but truly in nature we are one like there is no difference between at the end of the day the, a, a tree is standing there giving us life every single day doing more work for us than we can really ever recognize like we breathe because of them but we we some people don't see some people call people tree huggers if they like trees like that it's it's absurd to even understand um that cut like once you start looking at the cut and the divide that you place in your mind as the divide itself then you start to realize how absurd it is because an animal is us an animal is us in its own version in its own and as you said like just like race is that minuscule difference where it's like okay that is a black man this is a white man that is a mexican man that is, you can categorize all you want but you still end up saying the same thing at the end you still see, end up saying man at the end and i think that's the same consciousness that we have to apply to life where cow chicken giraffe zebra although i'm saying a few things that again we're getting close to sending them into extinction so we have to be aware but you say all of these things but you're just naming life if you can put them all under one tree and we're still under that tree then we're no different than them like we just navigate in our own way just like a giraffe navigates different than a bird because again they're completely different in the way of their physical structure they both are inherently awareness life and that's what we are we're awareness and life and that that's where like again it, it goes into so many like realms of understanding when it comes to the idea of like just living breathing organisms have to have our respect because as long as we're not respecting them we're not respecting ourselves and that's that's something that we have to continuously um fight against and approach with uh with with consciousness is if we're continuously disrespecting an animal treating them wrong and then wonder why we're disrespecting a man or disrespecting a woman for whatever reasons we have it's the same thing it's it's it all one we're the same in all the ways that actually matter mm -hmm. so we're the same in the fact that we can all feel pain that we all think we all desire to live and so that's why i always like to say at the end of the day there's no humane way to take somebody's life that doesn't want to die wow. because we all have that desire to to live and and be here on this planet and as you were saying we as humans have completely taken dominion over this place that we call home but really mm. this earth is dying because of our actions
actions, not because of what all the other animals are doing, right? So mm. when you when we talk about consciousness and we talk about doing that inner work, yeah. what does that mean? How does somebody get started in doing that inner work? Can you give us a few practices, whether it's daily practices, weekly practices, that keep your mindset healthy, strong, and keep you doing that inner work? What is, what is that and what does that I'm mean? I'm fine for that question. That's, that's yeah. on point and I needed that. Um, so my inner work is something that I hold extremely, extremely dear to myself. Um, even when I'm in the gym, I, I am that one weird bald nigga that is literally praying before I work out and I do not care. Like I literally will bow to um, one of my inner works is literally just uh, bowing to consciousness itself and bowing to existence. So uh, I lift my head, say thank you for consciousness. And that is to literally all of us that's literally a prayer for us as a whole which is consciousness if you're conscious and i'm conscious then it is consciousness you feel me so and then praying to existence which uh is just thanking gaia or mother earth for mm. for being here for for having this experience and giving blessing me with this body in this physical form that you literally gave me you made me out of you you know so um these uh that's just one example of you know taking a conscious moment like being a like completely present and just thankful and i think that's one of the first ways that really allows us to um check into consciousness is gratitude um from gratitude you know the things that have become a little more challenging for some is is meditation i think that's one of the biggest keys is simply sitting still like having your moment wherever it is wherever your quiet place is it or if you need music if you need something that's very calming listen to a meditative like meditative music or calming frequencies 432 always helps i really do feel like sitting in your stillness and closing your eyes and allowing the flow of your thoughts to just flow the reality is a lot of us are uncomfortable with the conversation that happens within us so when we have conversations outside of us, that's why we approach them with such negativity and such like aggression, because we literally are having problems with our inner dialogue. So sometimes that is the best thing you can do is just sit still and listen to yourself. Listen to what's going on with you. Listen to why you're upset. Listen to shit. You listen long enough, you'll listen to childhood trauma. You'll be listening to you from seven years ago. I was like, damn, I'm still not over that. Yeah, you're not over that. You never talked to yourself about it. You feel me? Like, and it's, it's not about, oh, I talked to this person and that person and this person and they gave me this piece of information because they're only going to give you information from their perspective. You feel me? You do have to literally have a conversation with the most knowledgeable person about you which is you like you are the most uh you're a scholar when it comes to you and um like i learned something not too long ago that the word diagnosis is is a, a like latin in latin it, it has a um a prefix that die is two which it's two understandings of one subject so diagnosis there's an expert on the actual like knowledge of the body which is the doctor but then the subject itself the expert is you so a diagnosis is a conjoining of the understanding and i think that's what we have to understand is like when you're trying to cure yourself and trying to do things right for yourself you truly are the biggest expert and sometimes the way to get the answers and sometimes the way to just find a little more peace is just sitting still and going within and having that inner conversation and learning more about yourself and i think the one of the one of the greatest tools that i also have is yoga like i've been doing mm -hmm. yoga for i have no idea now how long, how long now like i started i believe in college when i was just like i was the captain of the team and like they, the yoga team <laughs> no no downward dog competitions <laughs> don't ever come at me for the downward dog i will put my butt higher in the air than you ever could now <laughs> <laughs> nah, <laughs> the basically I was like I was captain of the basketball team, oh, okay. <laughs> and like I would lead my I would lead the team through yoga, like do the beginning of like a practice or something like that. I would like small little practice, not like the whole thing of shavasana and like laying down, but like a full like little practice to let their body get a little more awakened. But also when it comes to yoga we understand it as like this big stretching bending fucking organism right but in reality yoga's whole center is the mind and consciousness in the soul so going deep within so really like stretching your body in a way so you can relieve all the 
pe- the pains and 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 hurts of your body so you can fully have a full meditation because mm. a full meditation is like damn like i i really don't have to worry about my body right now because i don't feel no pain i feel nothing like i actually feel like loose and, and numb so then you just go all the way in and have a really beautiful that's what shavasana is like that last uh pose in every uh, yoga practice is usually a pose where it's like corpse pose where you're just laying there on your back and just allowing yourself to absorb everything you just did oh, wow. you know um and i think i think yoga is one of those things that i'm so grateful for because that i think that goes uh, hand in hand with veganism i think it goes hand in hand with like loving my planet and loving myself it, it purely is like okay let me take this moment to literally like stretch my toes stretch my ankle like how many times a day do people just sit there it's like damn let me think about my pinky toe and letting it like rest on the floor and really push into the ground and feel or or standing for a few minutes just still and letting yourself feel the support that you have from the ground you know like that those poses are so um are meant for us to have a deeper connection with the the now and the present so um I really do enjoy yoga. I really do enjoy um, taking my time. Uh, like I was just talking to one of my clients yesterday about, you know, my gym regimen. But I like at this point in my life, I literally take three hours in the gym. I, I do not. I, I try to go under. It just doesn't work. I'm it's just what I like to do. Like I do yoga then I go run and then I go lift. And I think or it switches out. Sometimes I swim. Um, but that that yoga in the beginning is as if I'm releasing my body and like really uh, preparing it for an entire day, you know, and, and, and being present and being aware and, and being comfortable through the whole thing because, uh, because it's so focused on the breath and those, those ins and outs and just like, and, and, and again, how, um, how relieving a, a breath it can be, you know, how, how fully like, um, present you feel after just your mind causing that breath rather than just you going on autopilot all day just taking that one breath for yourself and just calming yourself into the moment that could be applied in so many things and I think like a lot of my control and my understanding and my emotional awareness came from my yoga practice and my meditative mm-hmm. practice you know um and just being because like again like I'm I'm not one of those people that are not in crazy situations but like, I handle crazy situations like no other like i like even i was with a shorty that time where we're at the juneteenth festival and a a crowd of people just start running directly it looked like world war z like they were running this way like directly at us and we're waiting online to get some vegan food uh we're waiting online to get these burgers and uh and we look and it's like oh shit but in that moment i took a breath and literally we didn't run for like no time we literally just ducked off and got in between something and let the whole crowd run by but that presence was only a product of just breathing you know just having that practice and and being present and i think that again that's a tool for all of us to use to really connect to our our life because we only have one so you really want to be here for every moment as much as you can i think that is such a such a good tip and tool yoga for me as well it's not something i i want to do it more it's not something i do every single day Mm -hmm. but i have found so often that when i am consistent in doing my meditation and doing my yoga i can approach life with a in a different way with a different outlook i don't get angry i i am able to actually like look at myself in the moment and breathe through it no matter what situation no matter what circumstance i was on my way to a work event that i was actually hosting one time and i got a flat tire and i was just sitting in the car with my boyfriend at the time and I had been really like going strong on my yoga and my meditation and normally I would have been freaking out like oh my god what do we do we gotta call an uber like I don't know what to do should I call should I call a tow truck and instead I just sat there and I breathed I grabbed a vegan muffin that I had in the car because we were also bringing all the freaking food to the (laughs) event as well and I said let's pull up a YouTube video and let's get the spare tire in the back let's change this Mm. we're gonna be probably 30 to 40 minutes late but And I was so calm in the situation. And that was just like an amazing moment where I could reflect and be like, wow, that's such self growth, but it's something that I needed to consistently do with yoga and meditation to then have those results. And not only that, but I took a Kundalini yoga class. Mm -hmm. Yes, a few months ago. And the teacher in the beginning of the class, she's like, you're not 
going to feel comfortable during all of these poses. Mm -hmm. You're not going to love this, but she's going to she said you're going to take that discomfort and you're going to take that ability to overcome the challenge in the class and overcome obstacles and life challenges yeah. in real life. Yeah. And it was so true because the next day I found myself in a situation where I was like, "Oh, I don't know if I can do this or I, I don't know if I want to do this." And I thought back to the the Kundalini yoga class where I was doing 118 cat cows <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, if I could do that, yeah, yeah. like I can freaking do this." Right, right. And, so I want to get into just as we begin to wrap things up, your music, your your art world, yeah, like yeah. what you're up to now, and I want you to tell people where they can listen to to your work. Yeah. Um, I am the greatest artist of all time. I don't I don't think you know really? yet, but uh, just check me out. I um I am a musician, and modeling was my claim to fame. I've had a full modeling career modeled all over the world i'm very grateful for it um but this transition to music has made me realize myself more than i've ever seen myself i feel like um i met myself through music and uh everything that i make is is of conscious like proportions it has something or some significant meaning that is uh meant to connect to you in some form or fashion like i literally make my music with a conscious understanding that someone is going to hear it and someone is going to have a connection to it um one of my favorite songs is lonely and it's literally about just being lonely and if you can point to yourself and say you've never been lonely then take that same hand and slap yourself with it because it's a lie <laughs> like like we we all like i love to make the music that we all can like you know play on that long drive somewhere where we're just vibing like I, I i love to have that um effect and like my music i i call euphoric hip-hop i call it like just the sound of euphoria the sound of vibration the sound of vibes whether it is a turned up vibe and you're with your friends and enjoying that moment or a, a really great moment alone where you appreciate the loneliness but long for something more you know like I really do look forward to having more music in more places, you know, movies and, and TV shows. That's all in the future. But uh, I am one of the dopest artists I know. And I do know a lot of artists. And I say that honestly, just because I'm not just one thing. I'm, I'm a musician. I'm a videographer. I'm a photographer. I'm a model. I'm an actor. I'm a hooper. Um, so the, the, the multifaceted parts of me is the reason why uh I approach my music the way I do and and really hope to connect to as many people as possible because at the end of the day, because of who I am, my community is huge. I, I have a music community and I have artists around me and um, and fans and whatnot, but the reality is I also have a basketball community and I also have a fashion industry community and all and skateboard community. Like, like all of these communities mean something to me and mean a, a great deal to a certain part of me that I will never want to not feed. I will always want to give them something as well. So, um, yeah, just uh, you can check out my music on my website, diosmag.com, or you can go on Instagram, follow any new video because I'm always making like uh, very specific reels to like, uh, again, capture an essence of a like a full music video in that 15 or 30 seconds that I have your attention. And, um, and you know, at Deal Smack on Instagram and TikTok, and what else? And Apple, so, what's Apple Music. <laughs> what's next for you? And what's next for Deal Smack and and veganism and spirituality? Mm. And oh. do you ever see yourself not being vegan? No, hell no. It's it's over for that. Like a uh, th like this diet has been the one that is like oh, okay. It's, it's and, and again, it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. Like it's 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 completely where I'm staying and and just letting this be what it is because I, I fully enjoy it. Um, and there's this like ecstasy like they say sushi is like an aphrodisiac and it, and it does give you this really like invigorating feeling after you eat it but imagine your entire diet feeling that same way like mm. i feel like every single meal i have gives me this extreme cleanliness that like it's like a uh, it's a deodorization of the body like you know after you put on some really good smell good deodorant you feel better and i feel like that's what happens within you so uh i i will le never not subscribe um um what's next i, I have like a, a movie coming out a uh, feature like a no not excuse me not a feature film but a short film coming out uh pretty soon where i'm playing a villain very happy about that uh and yeah what, what's next for the music is just a uh, more conscious present music hopefully some extremely like addictive dancing vibes i want people moving i want to work at festivals and really turn that shit up and um 
and yeah yeah just more expansion into the self well thank you so much for coming on and guys if this is, inspires you in any way to just go up to people in a cafe and chat them up go nice, do it nice. because you never know you might be more connected than you thought you were and it's such an honor to know you to meet you to be a part of this collective world with same, you and same. to share so many values i find that when you meet people that are vegan that are on that same spiritual path it's like i feel like i've known you for years right, and right. we literally met yesterday so <laughs> anyway um you guys know where to find me i'm at it's jamie's corner and uh thank you again and until next time bye yeah.